In this video, we'll explore the topics and concepts that will be covered in the experiments which accompany the QNET Mechatronic Sensors Trainer. This trainer is designed to teach the fundamentals of interfacing with mechatronic sensors. The system is configured to utilize a wide variety of sensors measuring pressure, flex, infrared and visible light, magnetism, temperature, and more. In particular, the system can be used to teach measurement and calibration fundamentals. The accompanying experiments cover topics of instrumentation, measurement, calibration, natural frequency, and debounce. Using the QNET Mechatronic Sensors Trainer with NILabView, we can introduce and investigate real-world applications of these topics, applying theory to simulation and experimentation. In the first experiment, we'll be collecting data from our strain gauge and recording it based on moving the flexible link to given positions. Once we've filled out all the values, we'll use the curve fit parameters from the Collect Data tab to calibrate the sensor. With these values, we can compare how much we physically move the flexible link with the calibrated values on the screen. If these values match, we have properly calibrated our strain gauge. Next, we'll switch to the Natural Frequency tab and then manually perturb the flexible link. After a few seconds, we'll stop the VI to populate our power spectrum graph. The peak in this graph is a measure of the natural frequency of the flexible link. In the next seven experiments, we perform a combination of the measurement, calibration, and natural frequency calibration procedures we just explored. The experiments which make use of these procedures are pressure sensor, piezo sensor, potentiometer, infrared, sonar, optical position, and magnetic field. The next experiment following those listed is the encoder experiment. Here, we'll be investigating the signals generated by an encoder and how to calibrate it. Encoders are used in motor control systems, such as robotic arms, to verify the speed or position of a motor. We begin by qualitatively analyzing the encoder signals measured when turning the knob attached to the encoder both clockwise and then counterclockwise. We'll also investigate the use of the index pulse. Next, we'll perform calculations to find our counts per revolution values and the reload values. To do this, we reset the encoder when the zero value on the knob is pointing upwards, and then spinning the knob one full revolution. In the temperature sensor experiment, we can measure temperature using a thermistor. Temperature sensors are used in many everyday applications, such as refrigerators and thermostats. In this experiment, we'll investigate the voltage reading of the temperature sensor at room temperature. Then, we'll heat the temperature sensor with our finger and record the voltage measured by the sensor at this elevated temperature. Next, we'll calibrate the temperature sensor using the exponential parameter value obtained in the pre-lab procedure. Once we've input the value, we can capture the response of the temperature sensor starting at room temperature and then with a finger placed on it. In the switches and LEDs experiment, we'll investigate the measured behavior of different types of switches and observe the results of powering LEDs on and off. Switches and LEDs are two of the more common components and are used to control and display digital signals. Using the optical switch, we'll observe the response to sliding a piece of paper up and down into the optical switch. We'll investigate an appropriate threshold value to use to generate a digital signal from the optical switch. Next, we'll observe the response to the micro switch being pressed. We'll adjust the gain and offset values to generate a digital output with values ranging from 0 to 1. We'll then observe the response to the push button being pressed. Again, we'll adjust the gain and offset to generate a digital output. Finally, we'll switch the values of the digital outputs and observe the response of the LEDs on the trainer board. 
In the final experiment, switch debounce analysis, we'll investigate signal conditioning using a debounce algorithm. Debounce is used in circuitry or switches, such as on a computer keyboard, so that pressing a key will only be registered once. First, we'll run the oscilloscope instrument to qualitatively analyze the signal measured from the micro switch being pressed. Next, we'll run the debounce VI and observe the response of the micro switch. Finally, we'll observe the response of the push button and qualitatively compare it to the response of the micro switch. In this video, we explored the topics and concepts that will be covered in the experiments which accompany the QNET Mechatronic Sensors Trainer. The topics of interest include instrumentation, measurement, calibration, natural frequency, and debounce.